what scientists really discovered at the depths of the Mariana Trench. A couple years prior to filmmaker James Cameron's 2012 solo dive into the Mariana Trench, a group of scientists would report a mysterious encounter they had while exploring her depths. Before the dive, they had picked up a massive anomaly on their radar. And even though they assumed it was a large gas cloud recently released from the bottom of the ocean, the lead oceanographer and his assistant were excited to take the dive. It was also noted that they were the only ones brave enough to. As they approached the large rounded anomaly, they begin hearing something. And they notice that as they're hearing the sound, they can feel the pressure of the water changing around them. You sure you want to continue? Asked the oceanographer. How could we not? Said his assistant. And they continue. They get within 100 feet of the anomaly and they notice something metallic and shiny in the water. What is that? They say. That's when whatever it is lets out a loud screech like nothing they have ever heard before. You can literally feel the vibrations of the high pitched screaming. Then suddenly, as soon as it started, it stops and the anomaly has disappeared. The oceanographer looks over at his colleague and her eyes are wide. What's wrong? He asks. The sound we were hearing and the pressure change that we were feeling before the screams was breathing. The conspiracy theorist who predicted his own death, 9-11, and the New World Order. Milton William Cooper, also known as Bill Cooper, was born in 1943 in California. After high school, Cooper went to the military, where he joined the Navy in fight in Vietnam. It was at this time when he saw top secret documents while working for a briefing team under Admiral Bernard A. Cleary. He was the Admiral of Navy's specific fleet. Cooper had seen top secret documents that proved collusion between the United States and aliens. He claims that we wanted to work with aliens to create a new world order. He also claimed to see other top secret files that explained that Kennedy's driver was actually the one that shot him. And apparently he did this using a gas pressure device developed by the aliens. After Vietnam, Cooper attempted to reach the media and inform the public. But on his way to meet the reporter, he was hit by a black limousine. Leg amputated, too. The Conspiracy Theorist Who Predicted His Own Death, Part 2. Cooper's prediction on the New World Order and Illuminati was that Illuminati was controlling us or the higher-ups in our society, and then Illuminati was being controlled by aliens, and that they ultimately wanted to enslave us and force us into labor. But in the 1990s, aliens kind of lost their conspiracy lust. So Cooper went back to the totalitarian government idea and figured that aliens were just a red herring for the Illuminati. Well, this started to catch militia's attention. And that's when a gentleman named Timothy McVeigh became Cooper's biggest fan. And after Cooper sold him the copy of the video on Waco, Texas, Timothy McVeigh did the Oklahoma City bombings. The FBI paid him a visit after the bombings, and this is when he started to fear for his life. This only pushed him harder into spreading his theories. In the late 90s, he noticed the number of kids prescribed to Prozac and Ritalin. Eight years later, the Columbine shootings took place. Three. Not only did he predict Columbine, Cooper eventually predicted the 9-11 attacks. And he did so just two months before they took place. He also predicted that the 9-11 attacks would eventually lead us to Afghanistan. But eventually, Cooper would start to kind of lose it. He started feeling like everybody was after him. And after his wife and kids left, he eventually would hit rock bottom. This would later lead to him getting in an altercation with police where he would lose his life. But he would go down in history as one of the most renowned theorists of all time. And his book, Behold a Pale Horse, is still a bestseller. Although Cooper didn't end up on the upstanding side of things, he was still one of the greatest conspiracy theorists to ever live. He unfortunately just let himself get a little too carried away. But his predictions of like Columbine and 9-11 were absolute genius. Arguably one of the greatest minds of all time. you an ancient advanced super civilization existed before Antarctica had ice and that they met their demise due to something apocalyptic. The map you see behind me was rediscovered in 1929 by a German theologian. It was created in 1513 by Ottoman admiral and cartographer Perry Reyes and is said to be one of the last maps 
drawn off of one of Christopher Columbus's maps. Using the Columbus map, along with much older ancient Arabic maps, Perry Reyes was able to produce this. But what has the scientific community buzzing is the fact that he draws Antarctica with no ice. This map, along with two others in existence, were the only ones to ever depict Antarctica with no ice. The more popular of the two maps remaining is the one behind me, the Orence Finney 1534 world map. Both creators reference the compilation of ancient maps that are no longer in existence, meaning ancient civilizations existed that could map the world before Antarctica had ice. And not only were they able to produce them, they did so accurately, as both maps have the circumference of the Earth correct within 50 miles. So when did this ancient super civilization exist? They figure anywhere from 9 to 13,000 BC. This number was derived from ice core samples taken from the Arctic shelf that proved she had no ice during this time. Many believe that this super civilization could have been the giants and that they were the ones responsible for all of the megaliths we find throughout the world. The ancient stone carvings were how they cemented their legacy in history. But what happened to them? Where did they go? Well, this is where it gets interesting. In 2006, using data produced by satellites that pick up gravitational anomalies, a team of researchers discovered a massive anomaly below Wilkes Land in Antarctica. What they discovered, a 300 mile wide crater at a depth of almost 2400 feet. They figure this massive crater, which is up to three times the size of the Chicxulub crater, which ended the dinosaurs, was produced by an asteroid. The asteroid that killed the dinosaurs was nearly six miles wide. This one is estimated to be almost 30. But this is where I feel researchers are getting it wrong. They assume that this impact took place almost 200 million years ago. In all reality, they haven't been able to verify this because it's so far below Antarctica's ice shelf. So my theory is they are mistaken, that that asteroid actually made impact as recent as 9 to 13,000 years ago. This impact would be so devastating that it could actually shift the poles. And it would most certainly create an ice age due to the debris blotting out the sun. That, along with the massive flooding, which some scholars believe there has been more than one flood, would wipe out 90 plus percent of all living things on Earth, including super civilizations. So what do you all think? Could my theory be correct? Let me know in the comments. And make sure you smash that like button and follow me for more content. Click the link in my bio and follow me on other platforms for more. Coco the female gorilla gives warning to humanity right before her death in 2018. Algo que você não vê, mas a câmera acaba filmando.
30 seconds ago, I just caught something. I'm, I'm losing my mind right now. Please tell me what I just saw. Like, look at it, analyze it. What did I just catch on the moon? I'm losing my mind. Oh my God, what did I just video? Oh my God, oh my gosh, what was that? I'm losing my mind. Sign of fear. This is the legend of the Mothman prophecies. It was a moonlit night in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, when Roger and Linda Scarberry were on their way home from a date. Dark had just settled in as they were driving past the TNT area, a known munitions plant from World War II, when Linda Scarberry saw a red illumination from the sky. Roger, look, can you see that? Yeah, what is that? He replied. They watched as whatever it was disappeared behind the trees. Baffled by what they saw, the couple continued driving, when suddenly a large shadow cast over the vehicle. What is that? She wondered. And as she looked up, she saw something that she'd never forget. It was a large flying cryptid that had a wingspan of over 12 feet. Fear swept over them as the creature dove down and began flying next to the car. She put it to the floor and the creature screeched as he increased his speed. Two. This is the legend of the Mothman prophecies. As they increased speed, the beast kept up, staring at them with glowing eyes and screeching almost like a bat. As they reached almost 80 miles an hour, the beast let out one last discontented yell before it disappeared into the trees. As soon as they got home, they notified the police. Little did they know at the time, Linda and Roger Scarberry would go down in Mothman history. Throughout the next year, over 100 witnesses would claim sightings of the Mothman. The most renowned encounter taking place a year and a month to the date on December 15th, 1967. On this day, after work around 5 p.m., the silver bridge was packed with cars. When out of the blue, the bridge began making a loud creaking noise. And as one driver looked up, he saw it. Then suddenly, the bridge collapsed. Many say Mothman was flying circles around the bridge at the time. 46 died, two bodies never found. After the sightings in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, everything quieted down for quite a while. Only as of the last decade or so, sightings have actually started to happen again. The Mothman is making his comeback. There's more pictures, but this was shot in Chicago in 2016, and frequent sightings of Mothman have been happening ever since. Though he is an odd creature, I don't really see Mothman being super malevolent. The theory is that Mothman actually got here hitching a ride on a comet. That one kind of blew my mind. The theory that Mothman actually hitched a ride on a comet and broke through our atmosphere, getting to our planet. The funny thing is, this has already happened on Earth, probably numerous times. But one of the most notorious is the octopus. It has been proven that the octopus was not indigenous to Earth, but actually hitched a ride on a meteorite. Hope you all enjoyed. This is the legend of the Beast of Bray Road. It was almost December 1990 when Heather Bola was playing with some friends in a nearby cornfield. They were having so much fun, night began to fall before they knew it. And just as Heather said, we should be going home, it's getting late. All four of her friends froze in their tracks. At that moment, an eerie feeling crept over them. Heather looks at her friend, I feel like there's something watching us. Her friend goes, I know, I think I see it. What is that, she proclaimed. And just as they all turned to look at it, the beast leapt at them with precision speed. As it was barreling towards them, her and her friends let out a loud shriek and ran for the edge of the cornfield. After they cleared the cornfield, they continued running, but then, realizing they heard no footsteps, they stopped. All four of them turned around to look, and that's when they saw it. The beast was seven feet tall, stood on two feet, and had glowing red eyes. Two right after. This is the Beast of Bray Road, part two. The beast stood at the edge of the corn, glaring at them as if intelligent. Heather and her friends just stood there, frozen with fear. The beast let out a discontented growl, disappeared into the darkness. When asked what it was, she was reluctant to say, but she knew all along. Jump to 2014. It was early October when Sinjay Singal was driving down the four mile stretch known as Bray Road. He was cruising along at 55, when all of a sudden he caught something in his peripheral. He glanced over and in the field next to him, he couldn't believe what he saw. It was a beast-like cryptid running next to him, but it was on two feet. 
The beast was covering 20 yards of stride and floated almost magnificently across the landscape. As the beast was running next to him, it suddenly looked right at him. Sinjay recalls the fear that shot through his heart. The beast was looking at him almost as if it wanted him to know it was real. Welcome to Bray Road. This is the Beast of Bray Road, part three. So sightings, yes, have recently been happening. Nobody's exactly sure what it is, but they do believe it to be a werewolf. And people may laugh, but these people truly believe in this. Their beliefs stem from the ancient Indian civilizations that used to live there. It isn't very well known, but Wisconsin actually has up to 25,000 burial mounds. Some of them even depicting things like this. They believe it's actually a skinwalker. Most skinwalkers are generally bad to people, but some actually believe that these beasts are protecting us from something we don't want to see. They may be protecting us from another entity or another realm. I truly believe if they do exist, these beasts are going back to Middle Earth. Kind of like Bigfoot, there's no way he's been this elusive. He can actually jump through the stargates.